The regular meeting of the Board of Public Works is now in session. Please rise. We have the Pledge of Allegiance by John Baker. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we're going to have an invocation by Judy Fish. She's not here. Dan, can sure. I get you, please? Sure. Bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for all of our many blessings and for the opportunity we have to meet together in this Board of Works meeting. We thank Thee, Father, for living in Connorsville and for all the many blessings that Thou has bestowed upon us. We thank Thee, Father, for these who serve on the Board of Works and for our Mayor and for all the employees of the city. We pray for Thy uh, choices blessing to be upon them as they work to help us have a better place to live in. We also pray for the all the other departments, our police and fire, our EMS, all those who put their lives in harm's way, will thou bless them with safety and protect them as they do their jobs. And we ask thee, Father, to bless us as we meet together that we might come to good decisions and be able to help the city move along. We also pray that thou would open the windows of heaven and bless our town with prosperity. This is our humble prayer to thee at this time, and we ask it humbly in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Now, everybody, please stand. Please, remain standing, please. Uh, we'd like to have a moment of silence for all the fallen officers we've had in the last few weeks, and we'd just like to think about them and lift them up. <clears throat> Amen. Can everybody just please turn their ringers off, please? Okay, we'll have roll call. Jim Barrett? Here. Tim Bentley? Jerry Irvin? Here. Annette Reedman? Here. Okay, we have enough for a quorum so we can proceed with our business. Uh, everybody has the, the minutes of our last meeting. Is there any additions or corrections? I stand that they be approved as written. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any more discussion? Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor say by saying aye. 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 <coughs> Passed. Okay, uh, under new business, I'd like to announce that uh, Brad Colder has graciously accepted Title VI coordinator. Thank you, Brad. <laughs> and then we go on with our business. Uh, uh, Carol, can you come up and give a, a report on 523 West 7? Street Department noted the week before last they found that the, um, the basement door it has a four basement door. It's open, leaving the basement open. Uh, it needs to be demolished. Uh, Deputy Chief Fee got two quotes on that, both for a little, around $7,000. However, I think the Street Department will be able to take that down. I think we can. Okay. We just need to move forward, and I understand that there are several ahead of this one. However, it is it does have an open it does have an open hole for the basement. It's a door that was in the floor and it's gone. Uh, the property has sustained substantial fire damage in the last few years. Okay. Your Honor, I may say that we, when we were up there cleaning it the last time, uh, I literally pulled my guys off because we were making it too easy to get into, quite frankly. And it scared me that much. I called Carol right, right away. Okay. So, do you have a time schedule where maybe you can do this one? Well, it's vacation time, it's summer. I don't know. We can get her knocked down, pretty sure. Now, as far as cleaned up the rest of the way, I don't know. Okay. But we'll just have to play that one by ear. Well, with knocking it down, keep people out of it? Okay. Okay. Mayor, I think we need to uh, pursue um, Ordinance 98, I believe it is, dangerous housing and or nuisances, which is in our ordinance code. And what we've done in the past is I would file a lawsuit with authority at the Board of Works and get a judgment uh, requiring the uh, owners to bring the property into compliance with the ordinance within 30 days. 
and if they fail to do so, the city could bring the property into compliance with the ordinance, including demolition if necessary. Uh, that's that has been the way we've done it in the past, and that protects the city. It's still private property, so privately owned, and it's uh, uh, the owners are. We don't know where. In Texas, and I have made several attempts to call to contact them. Yeah. I did get a message this morning with a number of a lady who was responsible for the property. Where I'm trying to call them and hasn't gotten a return call yet. Yeah. Well, I what I would so need... far the certified letters from Mulling have come back. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Yeah. What I would need is a last known address in the courthouse records for property tax purposes. Yeah. And I can serve serve them at that address it's a company by certified mail. And if they don't respond, that, okay. that we still get good service. So we can pursue litigation in that regard. So do we need a vote to let you proceed with that? Yes, I recommend that. Okay. Mr. Mayor, Your Honor, um, I think I understand something about the building. Is this the building that there was about an inch of bird droppings in there? I, you know, I didn't go that far into it. Nor did I. It, okay, so on the third floor, is this the one you're talking no, about? It's on 7th Street. It's a residence. It's a residence. Should, oh, it's a residence. You get pictures. There should be pictures of the open yeah. Packets of the open basement door. Okay. You can see that there's quite a bit of fire damage, which was arson. Okay. My name's on salt. I'm sorry, my mind flipped to another building, and I wasn't on the same page. Okay, uh, do we have a motion to second to do Mr. Baker's recommendation? I make a motion we follow Mr. Baker's recommendation of litigation clarification. <clears throat> okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any more discussion? Okay, all in favor signal by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, John, you got your you got your blessing. All right, I'll proceed. Thank, Thank you. you, John. Yep. Okay, we have a request to remove weed liens off of the property asked for by uh, George Taylor. You have them in your packet there. George, I come up and talk about them. Sure. Okay. Well, I, this property they're just talking about, it's, it's uh, you know, probably fixed up. I've looked at my records and uh, we have rehab 78 houses in Carnesville since we started doing those, and probably more that I don't have. But anyway, uh, some of them were bought through tax liens, such as this one here, and, uh, and uh, those of you that are aware of those tax liens, there's a year float time for the owner to, to come in and pay for the taxes and redeem their property, which uh, you know, I have interest in because I paid the property tax for them. But, uh, but uh, I uh, that I don't own the property at that time. So when these weed liens were put on, I actually the judge had to give me possession of them. And he, and I don't know if everybody has a copy of these. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're looking at 2015 Grand 1623 Vermont okay. and 2355 Indiana. Yeah. Well, we'll just yeah we'll just start with Indiana. Um, so uh, I've got I got the, the uh, actual servicing liens of, of what they did and when they did it, and those are numbers one, two, three, and four. Uh, and all of these on Indiana were uh, added <coughs> before the auction date. Mm -hmm. So therefore, you know that I would that should be wiped off because at the auctions, you know they tell you what is owed. And then that's what you have to bid plus, you know. That, that's so, the tax sale you're referring to, yes, George. Uh, and the sale on these was October 30th, 2014. Yes, mm -hmm. that's that's when the auction was, and all these liens were prior to that day. Did you know about it when you bid on it? No. Okay. No, it's it's they they'll tell us at the auction that everything's cleared up to that point when you auction something. Okay. When you auction the tax, all the liens are are added to that deal. So uh, this was added after the fact. Okay. Um, so Good. therefore, you know, it's like you buying something, and it's oh, by the way, you owe me another fifteen hundred dollars because of weed liens. 
you know, well, you know, you need to know that up front. Right. Yeah. So basically, that's that's that one. Um, and then we move to the next one, Grand Avenue. Uh, and they're numbered also, uh, the lanes, one, two, three, four, and five. And those also were all added before the auction day. What kind of total were we talking about there, George? Pardon me? What kind of total were we talking about? Uh, I don't know. I didn't look the total it. was uh, $3,925.07. The property on Grand Avenue, the weed liens are $887.50. Thurlings, one fifty eight thirty eight. <coughs> Uh, property on Indiana Avenue is all weed liens, $975. Vermont is weed liens, uh, $1,825. And the sewer liens is $79.19, totaling the $39.2507. And um, I think we discovered earlier this year that due to uh, properties going through tax sales, there is not a procedure in place to remove the um, weed liens and sewer liens. Well, I believe there's, a, there's, the, there's a, a statute that says they are to be removed, <clears throat> uh, removed in the sense that the, uh, I think you've taken the position, you're willing to prepare the uh, release and give the release to the uh, grantee and the tax deed and then he can record the release and so on, which is a way to do it. <clears throat> but I, ne I need to make the uh, Board of Works aware of uh, something so they can consider this. I'm not saying it's needs to control your decision one way or the other regarding certain of these liens, but uh, uh, the statute provides that a tax deed uh, executed under this section vests in the grantee, that would be George, in fee simple, free and clear of all liens created before the tax sale except the lien of a political subdivision, that would be a city, uh, for special assessments that accrue subsequent to the sale. So I, I guess, George, it would, are, are any of these liens that you're referring to here, were they put on after the auction or the sale? The, the first two that we went through, those were all prior to the auction. Yeah. And um, the last one, uh, okay, I lost track here. We went over which two, let's see. Uh, I'm looking at uh, the first set you gave us uh, on uh, Vermont Avenue. It, it shows the sale date to be October 30th, 2014. And then uh, if you look at number four. Oh, yeah, the, I think, okay, Vermont. Yeah, let's see the difference. Yeah, the, those liens went on after the sale date. Exactly. Um, the, yeah, that's the, let's see, that is, well, actually, actually we have two then. Uh, uh, Grand Avenue, all five of those were put on prior to the auction. Well, the, then they, 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 statutorily, they should be extinguished. The ones that uh, go on after the sale date, statutorily, are not ordered to be removed by the court. And Th that's up to the, this board whether or not they want to remove the ones after the tax sale, before the tax sale, they're by statute removed. So you have to get the date of the tax sale and look at the lien date. Anything afterward is not automatically removed. It would be after the city, this board of works, to do that. And there, there's a, most most of them are before, I believe. But I, I noticed a couple on the on the uh, Vermont property, November 19, 2014, was one lien. Another was September 30th, 2015 and another October 23rd, 2015, and then one October 23rd, 2015. Uh, and then uh, January 7th, 2015, the last four in the packet. I'm not sure if the numbers coincide with what's in front or not. 
And I'd like to remind the board that, you know, that was not in my possession. I did not own the house. Even after the auction, you don't own that house for a year, a year plus, until the judge actually tells you you own that house. Well, you're, you're saying the period of redemption is yes. expired. It's From a the year. time you take a tax deed for a year. A year, and then it normally <clears throat> takes three months or so for a judge to sign off on that. Yeah. Also, so, so it's out of my out of my hands. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, I, I agree. And there's been a change in the law I want to make you aware of. Mm -hmm. But anyhow, the uh, the statute in effect at the time that you bought this property in October of 2014 uh, provided the uh, any liens prior to that auction date were extinguished, any liens afterwards were not. So any lien put on after October 30, 2014 are liens against the property. That's after you purchased the property at tax sale. And uh, was there a difference between purchasing and possession? Pardon me. Is there a difference between uh, purchasing and possession? Well, the tax deed uh, conveys fee simple title to the real estate to the tax buyer. And uh, prior to the change of the law, there was a question on whether or not they could go on to the property uh, without causing some difficulty with the tax with the owner of the real estate, even though there'd been no redemption. Um, to do things like mow grass and things of that nature. So it's, uh, that, that's been a concern of people buying property at tax sale. But the statute itself simply says liens before the tax sale are extinguished, liens after the tax sale are not. Unless you decide, you have, this board has the authority uh, to extinguish those liens if you choose to do so but they're not automatically extinguished after the sale. The ones before the sale are. Yeah. Prior to, I, I, didn't, I didn't get involved in the tax sales last year, uh, but prior to that, we was always able to get those uh, removed because it's, it was more of a penalty for those out-of-town buyers that sit on it and don't rehab them. We rehab them fully. We sell them on contract to people that have filed bankruptcy, uh, so therefore they're they 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 can participate in in uh, the low prices of, of so many foreclosures, you know. So they could buy now instead of when they get their credit straightened out, you know. The, the buying opportunities are gone lots of times. So uh, us selling them on contract, uh, we also. Uh, you have two owners now, the one that's buying it and myself, because I have to make sure these properties uh, stay in good repair. So we actually go to these people and tell them to clean up their yard, uh, you know, tell them, you know, the roof's bad, you need to get a new roof on it. Um, uh, you know, they take all pride in their ownership versus renting. Um, it doesn't cost them any more to buy than it does to rent if they have that two to three thousand dollar down payment that we request uh, but lots of times your damage deposit is a thousand dollars so you know it's kind of a win-all situation you got two people making sure taxes are getting paid myself and then the owner buying it on contract they're they're able to buy at today's lower prices with so many foreclosures uh, that which they wouldn't have that opportunity if we didn't sell it to them on contract um, so therefore, they, they get a, a lot more house, and our, you know we've sold many houses that they're probably you know worth twenty thousand dollars more than today than they were five years ago. You know the prices have improved, uh, and it lets them participate in that by having them by selling them on contract too. Um, and it, it's and there's just more pride in in yourself having your, you know owning your own home. And uh, taxpayers also don't have to, if they rent all their life, then they get to retirement. They can't afford a house, they can't afford rent. You know, if they bought a house 20 years ago on contract or through the bank, you know, their payments are low, their payments never raised. You know, uh, if you bought a house 20 years ago versus renting today, you know, your payment would have been $100, $150, and your rent payment's five, $600 now. So uh, I feel like you know we've done a lot of a lot of good for for those people that we have sold on contract, and, and I guess 
like for you to consider that and the 80, uh, 78 houses that we've taken from vacant to back to nice homes. Uh, uh, Dennis Perkins, Officer Perkins, uh, bought one of our houses and uh, right there in that neighborhood within, within a block of him, we had fixed one, two, three, four houses up right there within a block of Dennis Perkins' house. That's, that's right in front of the cemetery. And if you drive down through there, that's a pretty nice block right there. After I fixed up four of them that were basically vacant, you know, and, and really, really worn, worn out and, and in bad disrepair. Um, and the uh, fact that the weed liens is, I believe, is more of a penalty. I mean, it don't cost, you know, I, one time I had fifteen hundred dollars for one mow job. I mean, you know, I I get my yards mowed for twenty dollars. Um, so I understand it's a penalty. It's a penalty for those out of town that buy them and don't. A lot of people buy these and then they turn around and sell them, and it may take them two, three years sell them as is, maybe four or five years, and they don't ever fix them up. You know, we fix them up. We fix them all up. We don't we don't sell them as is unless we feel like that person's capable of doing that job uh, themselves. Because we're still loaning it. We're selling on a contract, you got to remember. We can't sell and be done with it. That house is ours. i got to make sure that it's done right, we insulate them well, so that they can afford to heat them. Because that person, if they've got to pay an astronomical heat bill, they can't afford to pay the payments to me. And I'm loaning the house again. So, you know, there again, you know, you're partners with them on these houses. Versus selling it outright, I'm done with you. You know, you got a problem, it's your problem. I mean, we sell things. We we uh, uh, offer. If they need anything for their houses. We sell it to them at cost. Uh, we we have 40 years experience doing this. So if you have a problem, you know, they come to us. You know, and we can tell them how to fix it. You know, if they can't afford to put a roof on their house. I'm going to put a roof on the house and add it to the mortgage because I don't want that house to go to pot, you know. So, so we have to, you know. So it's a, it's a whole different, different thing. We do, you know. It, I think it, it does a lot of good for the community. Okay, Daryl. That is so much more than a weed lane. We do not put our equipment on those properties until they've been cleaned. That means I've got in here with back hose, loaders. Back breaking work, loading up trucks, taking them to the cemetery. George, I understand what you're saying, buddy. I, I really do. But there is so much more than wheedling. Okay? I have seen many, many properties, not George's, I might add, that we have gone in, we've cleaned them up, they've grown back <coughs> up, they've become dump sites all over again. I've got one up by my house. So, I just want everybody to understand, it's not just mowing grass. I've never understood that. That's a good idea. It is not just mowing grass. My lanes are just mowing grass, so I mean, pretty much. I'm sure there's lambs that have to be picked up but outside of that, uh, you know. Well, let me ask you a question, John. When, when before they, they take possession, are they allowed to, once they're, we buy the house, the lean does the, tax yeah, the lean the house, tax lean. does, are they are, are the people that buy it? Are they allowed to go on the property to cut the grass? As of January, I'm sorry. As of uh, January 1st, 2016, they are. <clears throat> the statute's been changed. Um, I can give you the code site, and you, you need to know this because. Uh, yeah, I've heard, heard uh, Troy mentioned something. I never did get into the conversation with him. But well, the, the grantee of a tax deed uh, in the same court and under the same cause member in which the judgment of sale was entered, uh, the court shall enter an order to place a grantee of a valid tax deed in possession of the real estate. So you can have actual, physical, tangible, hands-on possession at the time you petition the court for your tax deed, and I suspect most attorneys are including that in the petition itself. And so let me. So that, that's only when you petition for the tax deed, or during the redemption year that I get on the mow. Because that's when the most of this uh, the mowing problem is, is that redemption year. Yep. 
Well, that, those were extinguished prior to the sale. What? No, it, during that, yeah, the ones prior to the sale, but after the sale, that one year redemption year that I don't own the property, but I have an interest in by buying the tax lien. <coughs> Uh, am I allowed on the property then at, with the new law? When, when you when you go to the auction, are you given a what are you given? A, a certificate or a tax deed? We get nothing at the auction. Uh, you, we, probably a certificate. All we're all we're doing is paying the taxes for that homeowner, and if if they they fail to pay their taxes, and the houses that we buy are dilapidated, they yeah. lots of times they won't because right. they don't. It's too much work, and they'll. Uh, then, then it becomes our property if they do not pay those taxes and if the judge signs that deed over to me. And that's about a 13, you know, that's about a 15 month wait from the auction date. One year period of redemption. And Plus then, three months for the judge to make that decision. Well, they, they have uh, 30 to 60 days. 31 days after the petition to issue the deed. But um, the um, um, statute we have to worry with is the one, and, and believe me, these don't necessarily all dovetail, is the one that talks about what liens are extinguished and what liens automatically. is just a matter of course. Mm -hmm. If there is a sale, these liens are extinguished, yeah. gone, like a mortgage. And it says, uh, the statute, I can cite it to you if you care to write it down, uh, is 61.125.4.6G. I'm sorry, can you say that more? Yeah, 6 1.1 25.4.6G. And it's the statute. Last Z, you G, like G. go. Okay. Yeah. And, and it's the one that talks about the. Um, liens prior to tax deeds being extinguished, afterwards uh, not being extinguished. Well, it's hard to determine, you know, when you're buying a property, how much. Of course, it, it's different yeah, now. Yeah, I mean, we won't have this problem mm -hmm. in the future if uh, if I'm allowed on that property after. Right. It. And there again, I. Uh, so I am allowed on the property after the tax sale. Uh, this it's uh, upon after upon application with the grantee of a valid tax deed. Well, that well, so then nothing's changed as far as I know because you know once you get the deed, then you're obviously you own it, so you it would be you're allowed on it for sure then. But prior to that, uh, I don't um, know who would enforce that though. <laughs> I mean. If somebody was, you know, if you went in and mowed it any, practically you know, speaking, no one force that. No one's going to enforce it. But, but uh, I think the question here is more of a practical one. Uh, this gentleman wants to rehab property and get him back on the tax rolls, and and he's done this down through the uh, seventy-seven times so far, uh, at least down through the years that I've been city attorney, and uh, we we've talked about this before. Um, it, 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 just as an observation, and this, this, this is your call, not mine, it would appear to me that uh, he's doing the city a lot of good by getting these properties on the tax rolls again. So uh, the liens compared to the, and I know it's a judgment call, but the liens uh, being extinguished, the ones that don't necessarily have to be, but can be by this Board of Works, are a, 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 a small, relatively small amount of the leads in total. Most of them are extinguished already. And uh, at the time of sale of the uh, property, but uh, uh, the ones that have not been, and I've, I've noticed here probably three or uh, on the uh, uh, property on Vermont and then a, a one, or one on each of the other two, uh, I don't think a matter of law would, would, would be extinguished. However, uh, uh, in light of the fact that he's bringing the property back on the tax rolls, uh, taking a risk uh, for sure in doing so and trying to rehab the property and, and uh, um, make it marketable, I think, uh, 
a benefit to the city to have people like George doing that. Uh, I'd like to remind, I think you just mentioned about tearing one down for 7000 Is that what I heard? To tear, the cost to tear one down? That's what I heard, yeah. Yeah, $7,000 to tear one down. Uh, uh, so. John, what, what we would do here today, if say we took all these liens off, would that set a precedence with this new law? It wouldn't set a precedent. You take each case on, their, on its own merits. Okay. It would still cost um, the city $216 to release all 18 liens. I would recommend you require the uh, uh, the grantee. I would present him with the releases so that he can record them. Are you willing to pay $216 to get him released? Uh, 3900 Yes, I have certainly no problem with that. Mr. Mayor, <clears throat> we have you this. The artist was looking at before this new when you're talking about Tucker Bay. You know, anything prior to the day that he purchased these properties, we have to disregard, right? They're automatically extinguished. They're automatic. We, so we after no that fault. point, then we look, we're looking at that. You know, I understand what you're saying, that you're buying this at a tax sale and you can't reach for a year, but you know, really the city spends a lot of money mowing these properties. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we go through the process of putting these liens on this property, which costs money. And you know, then as a bill, as a the rehabber of these properties, you have a way to recover some of the monies, which the city we don't. Mm -hmm. You know, we it, it like he just stated, it takes a lot of time and effort. And I have seen them on these properties with dump trucks and backhoes mowing and cutting. It takes a lot of time and effort. And the city is, you know, when we waiver this, we're not recovering anything. But you're getting the, eventually the property taxes back. If he, when he goes to sell the, I he will start. I think from worth zero dollars to worth exactly. I understand what you're saying. Tax, your tax is going to be on that property is going to go up, and, and it's going to be paid. Uh, as they sit empty, they'll sit empty, and uh, until nobody, until you guys decide to tear them down, then it costs you seven thousand. You lost, you lost four or five thousand, five years of taxes prior to tearing it down. Um, and then you have an empty lot that the city has to mow from there on out. Yeah. Uh, and then we also don't have a house that someone can buy at 60000 We have to build them a new house now because we don't have enough older houses, and they have to pay 150000 to buy the smallest house they can get uh, you know, at the day's prices. So there's, there's just a, a lot of good of saving some of these houses uh, besides saving city money. And, uh, and uh, boosting their tax, tax, or, uh, property tax bills for the individual, the, the owners. You know, I pass those, I pass these expenses on to to my owners. To you know, they, you know, if I, if I can't, you know, if I can't recoup these or get them removed, then that's just that much on the on the price of the house. And then if it gets to where it, it don't work, then I'm not doing it no more. And then they're sitting and they're sitting for five years and then you're paying seven thousand to tear them down and you've lost taxes from that point five years prior to forever and then you're mowing them every every month from that point on until somebody wants an infill lot that you can buy for three or four thousand and which nobody will buy i mean unless it's the neighbor i mean it's just not smart for me to buy a four thousand dollar infill lot in a bad neighborhood it just, it just don't, you can't build a house on it and make any money. You, you'd lose money in a bad neighborhood. And these houses are in, you know, declining neighborhoods when I'm buying them. Anybody else got anything to say? I mean, if, if he's willing to pay the 216.39, because we got this new law now, went in first, January 1st. I mean, they've done this in the past. Is that correct, John? Oh, yes. Yes, many times. Does it say it's retroactive for sales prior to January 1st? It is retroactive to any lien that went on and was recorded prior to the sale of the property at tax sale. Those are automatically extinguished at the tax sale by statute. This is the one I cited to uh, uh, Mr. George, Mr. Taylor, for but the uh, 
you, you I, I believe you can prepare the releases and uh, de deliver them to him or he can obtain them from you and he can record them and thereby uh, pay, pay some amount towards the release of the lien, which would be the recording fee. Okay. Rosemary, what was the total amount that you said of all the tax liens? All the liens was $3,925.07. That's a combination of weed and sewer liens. No. Okay. The majority of those are already released because of prior to the sale. So I don't know. Let's see. If you wanted to add those up, you'd have to add up. So you're not twice. talking three thousand nine hundred dollars, right? That was total. So. Well, I guess what I'm thinking if if so, we're not really we're not really letting go that much money, right? Yeah, and yet, all probably a thousand between all three properties. Get that. And you go in, fix them up, and sell them. Is that on am I understanding correctly? Typically on contract. I don't rent them. All right. I have very few. I maybe maybe five. Three or five percent of my properties might be rented uh, on HUD. Typically, um, we but don't it's like an to rent. opportunity for somebody who doesn't have the ability to take out a mortgage to get their own mm -hmm. home. Well, I've, I've sold to many people that uh, you know lost their jobs at Disney on making twenty-five bucks an hour, and they're down to twelve dollars an hour. They lost their house. And I sold them houses, and, and uh, majority of the time it works out. I mean, but I, you rehab them before you oh sell Oh, yeah, them. we rehab them. I mean, okay. I'm a partner. I mean, I want that house. I want you to have a good furnace. I want you to have a good roof. I, okay. you know, I want it insulated so that you can afford your heat bills so you can afford to pay me. Okay. If you're spending all your money on heat bills and repairs on that house, I try to make them... I, I, I try to make them bulletproof. Uh, we put hard, hardwood floors or laminates in, uh, rubber laminates now, so that there's, there's, they just last for years. You can you can mistreat them. Uh, you know you can run. You know you don't don't have to wipe up the water off the floors. You, I mean you, you know the dogs can use the bathroom on the floor and it don't hurt nothing. It's hard. You know we so we try to make it all bulletproof because uh, in the end. It's still my house until they, they pay them off. Uh, but the advantage is they have pride in ownership. Uh, and they try to achieve things in their life instead of just renting and being maybe kicked from here to there. <laughs> so uh, we also have four people full time rehabbing and fixing so up the ones that we get back. Because we do get mm -hmm. houses back. You know, we have to put another twenty thousand in because they have think? twenty, thirty thousand dollars worth of damage. And uh, you know, luckily that's only maybe ten percent of our our sales. So you know, in the end, you know, it works out for us because of the large number that we do. You know, if you're doing five or ten and you got that house back and you lose twenty thousand dollars, then you pretty much throw your hands up and say, "I'm out of it. I'm done." But you know, with the number that we have. Uh, you know, we take a twenty thousand dollar hit. We just grin and bear it and go on. Um, and because uh, there's nine out of ten people are good, it's that one out of ten that that's gonna cause you problems. Therefore, the interest, you know, on on uh, <coughs> contracts are more expensive than mortgages because they <coughs> they won't sell to the people that we sell to. So, but in the bottom bottom, uh, but the, the 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 thing is, is that they don't pay more than they would rent anyway when they buy a house off of us at fifty nine sixty nine thousand. Okay, we've had a, a discussion on this. Uh, I'd like to know what the board's pleasure is. Next motion: we re remove the weed liens. Okay, now you want that motion to pay the two sixteen thirty nine? Yes. Okay. Just the two sixteen. Yeah. Oh, two sixteen. Okay. Is there a second? I guess the thing that's going through my mind, for your sake, I do not mind seconding the motion. 
what's the flip side of it as far as the city is concerned? Well, other the, than what John has already said, the thirty-nine hundred dollars is reduced down to one thousand two hundred sixteen dollars. Was just the total that's left after okay. the date of the sale. And so we're know, talking about a thousand dollars here. Right, and we could already be receiving property taxes on these properties. Is that correct? Well, we're paying property tax now because yes, it's in so, my, my ownership. So, so we've already the, reaped benefits from him buying this property. He just wants a little relief now. Right. He wants a little bit of relief so he can put that money back into the houses to be able to get good renters in there or good buyers in there. Now, if, I it's, if, if, if it was in my possession, I would have no problem with that. But th this was beyond my capability, you know, beyond what I was allowed to do to keep the wean wings off. As I own them now, as the judge gave me possession of them, you know, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, so, because we take care of that. We have a, we, we have them on a mowing schedule and they get mowed, okay. you know. Okay, we have a motion in a second to remove the weed lean, weed leans. Is there any more discussion? If not, do a roll call. Jim Barrett? No. Jerry Irvin? Yes. Annette Reedman? Yes. Okay. They've Thank been you. removed. Sorry it took so long. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. Item C is the, approve, the uh, approval of the 2016 utility contract. Is there any discussion on it? This here just our blessing for the city council tonight. This is no, it's no way they're the agreement until the city council acts on it. It just us giving our approval that we we will abide by it. Is there any more discussion? I need a motion in a second. I make a motion we accept the contract. Sorry. Okay, we have a motion. Any second? Is there any more discussion? If not, I'll signify by saying this is resolution 2016-12, by the way. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor saying aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. I just... Okay. Is this what resolution is this called? It's not a, a resolution, it's an agreement to the solid waste district. Okay. More current. Okay, would you, would you explain this then? This is a lawyer jumbo. <laughs> you know what I'm referring to? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, John, you go ahead and address this. Right. Well, Rosemary had asked me to prepare a, an update on the uh, agreement uh, between the Fayette County Solid Waste District and the uh, City of Connorsville buying through its public works and safety having to do with uh, recycling of uh, uh, the uh, solid uh, Waste yeah, District uh, Refuge, and this one, uh, the, the former one, had uh, expired, and what I've done uh, is put one together that's retroactive to the expiration date of the former agreement going up to, uh, uh, let's see, I think we went 10 years first day of January 2012, which is retroactive, to the last day of December 2021. And this is nothing more than a, uh, setting out what's going on now, but it's in writing. Okay. We've done it in the past, or it was just a hiatus uh, between the two because it, for whatever reason, got forgotten. Okay. <clears throat> Just 
just a renewal of the contract. So, just, so I, we need a motion in a second to approve this agreement between city and the Fayette County Solid Waste District. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Okay, we go to, no, you got that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Mike, Bot <clears throat> Mike Bottomley or Brad? Okay. So, Hi. so you have my report. We'll go through it real quick. Um, <clears throat> revenue disbursements doing pretty well for the year. We had a good month in June. We're about halfway through the year now, and our balance is all looking good compared to the same time last year. Um, overtime, uh, 1,224. I kind of misspoke last meeting. The, over, the um, Gray Road overtime will be on the next report, not this one. So this one here, I think is our lowest overtime since I've been here. Uh, didn't, have any, didn't have any leaks, no major leaks, or uh, I don't think there was any holidays in June that we had a cover. <clears throat> um, work orders, 54 for the storm, water and sewer crews, and then 457 for customer service and meter department. Uh, project activities, um, we placed two fire hydrants, some catch basins. We had our 9th Street um, water tank emptied last week, inspected and, and cleaned. And our next step right now, we're waiting for Leary Construction to give us the official report on the condition of that tank. But um, when they left, uh, they gave some things that they'd like to see done to it. And if we do those few items, um, it looks like we have about 50 years in that tank left, which is good news. So we're waiting for their, so we're waiting for their report <coughs> to get a dollar figure, what it would cost them. We will begin the second phase, which would be a, uh, to look at the whole plant as a whole. So uh, uh, that's where we stand on that. And we have spent a little bit of time with Reclaimed Energy slash Superior Oil at their work site, getting them ready. And I think they are done with the underground work and starting with their building. So other than that, and on the claims, the only big claim we really had this last month on the, on the claims list right now, we had a um, $1,600 bill. Um, we had to rebuild our backwash panel at the water plant. Um, everything else, pretty much everyday bills that we have. Is there any questions? Is there any, more, is there any questions for Mike? No. Okay, Mike, thank you. Okay, airport, Gene Worley. Okay, Dan. <coughs> Good afternoon, Board of Works. My pleasure to stand before you and give a little report. Uh, I don't know that I've done that in this meeting before with this Board of Works. I think I may have just on incidental matters spoke to you, but from a, a reporting standpoint, uh, I just, I'm going to touch on three things. Uh, our revolving loans, uh, the newly acquired uh, Connorsville Industrial Center slash former DNM property, and also uh, touch on the ACT Work Ready Community Initiative. Uh, in no particular order, I'll uh, just start with the ACT. Uh, maybe I should end with it. It's very positive. Not that I have anything negative to, <laughs> to uh, tell you about. But the ACT Work Ready uh, an, uh, Community Initiative, we started, um, we went live in June of last year. And we have done quite well uh, uh, trying to achieve our certification as a Work Ready uh, Community uh, to go gold. Right now we're on the map. If you go to your computer and, and uh, type in uh, ACT Work Ready Communities and go to the national map, click on Indiana, and then you'll find us just a small group of counties in our state, uh, two of them gold, Randolph and Rush, and about <coughs> four others that are red, and then all the other counties are not involved in this initiative. We're kind of guinea pigs in this. 
But then if you ch check on some of the other states, boy, there are states that are just almost all gold, that are very, have embraced this program. What this program allows an individual to do, if you're caught in that gap where you got out of school, you don't have a certification, you don't have college, you want a better job, here's an opportunity for you to embrace this program through work keys testing, and that's done right here in our own town. In fact, we do some of it out at the, uh, uh, at the high school, or at the uh, career center. Uh, but most of it takes place at work one, when we do the work keys testing. Then you're, you're kind of categorized and graded as to where you, you, you land. You, you're either a, uh, a bronze, silver, gold, or platinum. And we have breakdowns on those that have uh, applied for this. And the ultimate goal of, of the, that testing, uh, and let's say you don't test too well, there is a way for you to uh, get additional help to raise your scores up and eventually become um, qualified for some of these better jobs in, uh, uh, in, in reading math and in locating information skills, which is what employers want. Uh, which will allow an individual to receive the NCRC, which is the National Career Readiness Certificate, which is a credential that you can include right with your resume when you go to, uh, to, to go job hunting or try to improve uh, your job if you're underemployed. Right now, uh, we have uh, three areas that we're, uh, we're challenged by the ACT to uh, goals. One is the emerging workforce, uh, that would be like high school seniors. Our goal was 77. We, we blew past that. We've had, we got 116 uh, current working who are wishing to uh, improve. Our goal was 89. We blew past that. We've got 134. Um, we were also to enlist the help of employers uh, to, to uh, buy into this proposition where they become advocates of the ACT Work Ready Community Initiative that they will use that to help, not completely, but to in part use that to screen people that are coming to work at their at their uh, uh, place of employment. So our goal was to sign up 21 employers, and we we went past that. We we have 24. Where we lack the the only category I haven't mentioned is transitioning. That would, and not only a way to put it, uh, transitioning uh, equals unemployed unemployed people. Our goal was 282, we're 274. We need eight more to be a goal county. And so as you look at this pie chart, that little sliver represents the eight individuals that we need to go through the work keys testing. And after that happens, we go gold. We'll, we'll, we'll receive our certification. So we're 98% of our goals attained, which is a good thing. And we have until May 31st of 2017 to accomplish that. So we're basically way ahead of the, we're doing good. Bay County's doing great in that area. The other thing I wanted to talk to you about was um, our revolving loan fund. And the revol revolving loan fund is uh, a great uh, asset that EDG has for new businesses, uh, businesses that uh, uh, want to uh, expand, uh, they want to enlarge their, their footprint, uh, and we've extended many um, prior to my coming on board, and we've extended a few since I've been on board, and we've given out more loan applications in the last six months than we have the last two years. Uh, and with people just becoming aware that this, this fund's available, uh, but uh, we have, and we're considering a couple that have been returned. Some of those applications have come back, and we're in the process of considering uh, uh, a few of them right now. Then the last thing I want to talk about, and if you have a question, just jump right in and interrupt me. I won't mind. Is on the uh, DNM property that we acquired uh, a month and 18 days ago. Um, we are in the process of doing a little sprucing up up there. Uh, not that it uh, is in bad shape, but uh, if you want to talk about weeds and neglect, uh, you know, all you have to do is drive behind it and look and you hear weeds as tall. In fact, there's about a year's worth. 
We've eliminated that. We've, uh, as of last week, those weeds are gone. Weeds in the front are gone. Now we're working on the north side. We've got those to go. So there is a plan in place for us to do our part in making sure that our lawns and our weeds are in check. We don't want to be the, the, the bad uh, landowner that neglects his property. We're not. Bear in mind, we've only owned it a month and 18 days. So we're doing our part. I want, I want the public to know that, and I want everyone else to know that, that uh, we're mindful of that. Uh, I can tell you a short little story, and Robbie's in here. He came in my office, uh, Robbie Fee came in my office the other day, he says, we've got a problem. I said, what's our problem? He said, we've got uh, a landowner who's complaining about the grass not being mowed. I said, well, really? I said, well, that's, that's something. I said, uh, Who's the landowner? And he looked at me and goes, it's you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so we got mowed that day, right, Robbie? So we, we took care of it that day. But he, he felt a little uh, weird coming in there telling me about it. And I felt a little bit weird about him telling me about it, but it all worked out. We're also uh, doing some improvements on the building as our budget will allow. Uh, we're also doing some things to help make the uh, the Ivy Tech campus side uh, more usable to more people. And we'll do more about that tonight in the city council meeting. And I wanna give that away. It's not a real secret, but it's, uh, it's not my, it's not my uh, story to tell. There'll be others here tonight to tell that story to the city council and I'll be glad to share it with you after the meeting so that you're not left out of the of the, uh, out of the know, and that's uh, we do have some leads on the on the uh, on the manufacturing plant, uh, and I, I really feel good that this uh, property that was gifted to economic development uh, will ultimately turn into a asset and a blessing for the city of Connersville. Uh, we want to be as careful as we can be about who goes in there and what they do. We don't want to get in, a, in, a, in a, a big haste and give it to somebody that will not be, uh, will not equate to jobs. We want to make sure that that, that the manufacturing plant equates into jobs. If, whether that's one employer or several, uh, there's room in there for several uh, different types of business to operate at the same time. Any questions for me? Mr. Barker, I have a question. You made the remark that you've had a couple of leads several. on the property. Yes. Several. How strong are those leads? Uh, some of them are. Uh, some of them are very strong. Uh, some of them are people just kicking the tires. You know, uh, I had a, a, a realtor, a commercial realtor, come in and see me uh, Friday uh, last week, who's very interested in. Um, maybe a one day showing to some uh, contacts that he has where he's, he's done this type of work before. There's a variety of people that want the opportunity to either do a one day showing uh, and there's a whole group of people that are interested in selling for us and getting commission. It would be pretty, well, we appreciate their help, but some of it we, we don't feel that we need. We really believe that there's an employer that wants in. We have the ability to talk with them without involving a realtor. And if we did, we have one on our board, so that would we could use her if we needed a realtor. But you asked the question, are they real? Yes, they are real. Some of them are based on timing. And we've held back showing it to some, not all, but until we really feel that we have it in, in the shape we want it in, because uh, it doesn't really show well. I, I've been showing it for two years prior to it being gifted to us. And there are a few things that are a little concerning. They're not major, but uh, we're, we're correcting those things right now. Uh, in fact, this week, uh, one of the, the big things, as everyone reminds me of every time they see me, is the big hole that the wind blew out. And we have a company that will to uh, we'll copy the profile of those panels and be able to replicate them 
at a pretty good price. And we, and of course, the, the gift, the person who gifted the building to us said that he would uh, do that repair work for us. That was part of the deal. So that's coming in the next few weeks. We'll have that hole patched. And then there are a few other similar type things that need to be uh, uh, taken care of. One of the big things is securing the building. Uh, I can't speak enough about our police department in helping uh, with added patrols, uh, making sure that people realize that uh, it's not a place to dump and it's not a place to, to, to play or, or get into mischief. And, uh, and I really appreciate our police department helping us. Uh, Carol and her, uh, her, her staff have, have, have helped us tremendously. Anything else? I appreciate the industrial development taking hold of it and doing what you're doing to it. It sounds like a, you're making it sound like a small undertaking, but it, I would imagine it's pretty major. And I'll be excited to know when some manufacturing jobs come back to Connersville because of it. Thank you, Annette. Appreciate it. Thank you, Dan. All right. Thank you. Okay. Dale? Okay, for our July or June report, most of you already have seen it since the meeting last week, but our uh, net expenses were 151,193.35. Our receipts were 105,783.35 which left us with 45,000, half of that for the city share was 17,590.35, what it cost us to operate. We did uh, 365 runs. Any questions? Thank you, Dale. Thank you. Jesse? Oh, wait, wait. oh, oh, sorry, Fire. Troy, sorry, Troy. You had a D. <laughs> We did 129 runs, 349 hours on emergencies, 30 inspections, and 14 investigations, 8 free plans, 160 hours of training, $15,000 estimated property damage. Any questions? So uh, people want to know, so how's your overtime doing? So, $1,656.86 in overtime and $761 in FLSA for $2,417.99 total for the month of June. Okay. Thank you, Troy. Thank you. Yes? Currently, we are getting ready for the fair. They'll start moving in a little, about a week and a half or so. Um, we had three trees cut down today that were a little bit dangerous and dead, so we got those down, and we are currently cutting them up and hauling them away. Uh, our summer discovery program is wrapping up. We have a little over, a little less than three weeks left to go. Um, and right now, we are taking sign-ups for machine pitch softball today and this Friday. And soccer, fall soccer signups have started and they end August 19th. All right. Thank you, Jesse. You're welcome. <clears throat> hey, Carol. My turn. Yes, your turn. The police department took 1,124 calls in June, issued 23 citations, full warnings. Uh, we had six injury accidents, 46 property damage accidents, 50 traffic stops, and we had 125 arrests. And your overtime? See, I knew you. I was waiting to see if you were going to ask. <laughs> well, this is, just, this is for other people's. I know. <laughs> Our overtime for the month of June was $7,843.61. And you might want to make a note that uh, we have how many shifts of overtime open this time? Uh, we 
Actually, we've covered quite a few of those. I can't recall how many are in July. I think I said before, but I can't remember. 23. Um, 23 or 24. Um, in August, uh, we have moved We have moved an officer around. He, he's volunteered, actually, to move. He went to third shift for a month. Now he's coming back to day shift. I think in August, our, our shifts that are open for overtime are six or seven. So we really... Um, We've got detectives working. They you you might want to uh, include uh, you're working on the bicycle patrol. Yes. Uh, there isn't a whole lot of opportunity for the officers to ride the bikes right now. However, they are going to try to get them out during the fair. I think there may be one day in August when we have enough staff. We're just, we're low right now. Okay. We're, we're behind. Um, as far as the ordinance enforcing, um, so far this year, uh, about 15 yards and sent out 52 letters. A lot of the yards get taken care of once Robbie contacts them or I contact them and ask them to mow, and they'll mow pretty quickly sometimes. Okay. You might let them know how, how much is a letter to mail to somebody? It's seven dollars to mail. Am I right? Seven dollars to mail. So we try to get them taken care of if we can. Like it's just like uh, Mr. Taylor was talking about. There's a lot of out-of-state owners who have purchased property, so those have to be mailed. Okay. Any questions for Carol? No. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? <laughs> you look a lot thinner. Yeah. <laughs> now mine's always that short and sweet. <laughs> as far as the overtime, it's $250.23 for a total of. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, that was for monthly expenditures and overtime was 1389 So, and normally what that consists of is what Phil has to do, but uh, sometimes we have a stop sign down, whatever. You know, we got to go take care of it. So. Okay. Are there any questions for Daryl? Mr. Tom Creech. Good afternoon. Uh, you folks have my report if you have any questions. In regards to overtime, uh, <laughs> Mary Dillon, I was to have it. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, is John here? Oh, there he comes. I didn't all the way. Oh, well, we had uh, six and a half hours of meetings last month, uh, 14 hours and 12 minutes of original programming. Um, we also did the CHS graduation, which uh, many of you may have known that uh, we live streamed for the first time, so people uh, that weren't able to be there could actually watch that live. And we actually had 22 people watch it. Uh, live and we didn't announce it until right before him because I didn't know if it would work or not. Uh, but it did, it worked great and a lot of people really appreciated that. So uh, we'll do a lot more with that uh, coming up in the future. Okay, you know we talked about uh, doing the uh, candidates at the fair mm -hmm. so so we don't put them on prior to the, the, the voting's already started. Yes. So you, you still got that planned out to do that? Mm -hmm. um, okay. I have not told anybody yet. Uh, that's coming today. But uh, anybody that's at like home watching uh, we will be doing a live candidate uh, forum at the fair. Uh, it will be in the pavilion on Friday night beginning around 6 p.m. Uh, that's our plan right now. News examiner will be asking the questions and moderating uh, the debate. Okay, thank you, John. Thank Any you. questions? Okay, thank you. Okay, old business, Jesse. I'm not saying you're old, just it's just some business. <laughs> Jesse Kelly is my name, and I'm here in um, in regards to the CARE project that's really headed up by Michelle Fox, and so we are asking for permission to put a banner on Central Avenue, I believe, August 3rd through the 8th, just prior to the event and the day of, actually, the 8th. And so I was seeking permission to do that. So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, say by saying aye. Aye. All opposed. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, is there any miscellaneous business to handle? Okay, if there's no miscellaneous, uh, Jerry, could you give us the uh, claims, of, including payroll? Claims for the city was $141,290.49. Claims for utilities was $181,954.80. Okay, you heard the, the claims. Need a motion in a second? So moved. Approved claims. Got a motion? Need a second? You can just second. Second. <laughs> okay, all in favor signify for saying aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Passed. Okay, we'll open it up for public forum. Is there anybody out there that wants to speak on anything? Anything at all? Okay, since we're all city employees, I guess. <laughs> this, this, I'll, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor signify saying aye. 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 Close.